sarcoidosis is the um, um, topic for um, this video and sarcoidosis is uh, essentially a um, immune disorder and you can think of it as an immune disorder and um, before we get into the symptoms it's important to explain what's happening so sarcoidosis involves the development of these granulomas in many organs and most commonly those organs are the lung and the lymph nodes now why does what is a granuloma well granulomas are these clusters or masses that kind of resemble tumors and they're clumps of cells and what cells well they're cells from the immune system so you have macrophages and lymphocytes and these cells cluster together uh, and I'll show you a picture up here is a diagram showing those granulomas histological uh, picture what's happening here is you have these macrophages and lymphocytes clustering because you have an immune response an immune response to some toxic or infectious material so for example let's say the body uh, uh, is introduced to a virus or a bacteria or some in, in you inhale some uh, agent um, <clears throat> that's foreign to the body well the body responds with an immune response uh, by um, creating these granulomas which is clusters of cells from the immune system in an attempt to uh, fight off these uh, toxic or infectious uh, agents but the problem with sarcoidosis which is the topic of this um, presentation is that the body is unable to stop this response and it spreads from organ to organ so that's really the main pathophysiology of what's happening so as a result you get these granulomas in different parts of the body most commonly lung lymph nodes and then you can also get them in the skin and eyes but you can probably get them in any organ and there's a long list of organs it can affect but these are the the main players for most diagnostic uh, settings so you get these granulomas and they have a special name they're called non-caseating granulomas or non-necrotizing so that's what's happening these granulomas are uh, being developed uh, in these uh, organs so when these granulomas develop they can cause symptoms that are related to these organs so the most common symptoms are pulmonary symptoms because the lung is most commonly affected and those pulmonary symptoms are usually 90 percent of cases of sarcoidosis will have those pulmonary symptoms and they include uh, difficulty breathing cough uh, they can also include uh, fatigue uh, weight loss and then because the lymph nodes are also affected on physical exam you can get uh, non-tender lymphadenopathy LAD lymphadenopathy is a, a physical exam sign and because the skin is infected you can get a, a very interesting rash called erythema nodosum and then uh, the eyes are infected and you can get uveitis uh, there's many other organs that can be affected but those are usually the most common players so how do you diagnose this well sarcoidosis is diagnosed really uh, basically usually with a chest x-ray and then once the chest x-ray or some sort of imaging CT of the chest maybe is done you need to then um, biopsy then you have to biopsy the granulomas to make sure that they indeed are those non-caseating granulomas um, and not some other type of granuloma when you do the chest x-ray what finding and there's a classic finding it's called bilateral hilar adenopathy so what is that 
Well, I'll show you a picture. It's right here. Um, basically, what that means is that you have these, usually it's an incidental finding, is that you have these bulky tissue areas uh, near the blood vessels of the lungs. And these are usually seen on a CT or a chest X-ray. And it's essentially showing the enlargement of the lymph nodes deep in the center of the chest uh, as a, due to those uh, granulomas. And then when you biopsy it, it will look like this on a biopsy. So this is sort of the chest X-ray and this is the histological diagnostic uh, picture. And then uh, finally, how do you treat it? Well, the, the main treatment involves corticosteroids. And corticosteroids are used uh, most commonly prednisone. And usually they're given uh, either once a day or once every other day as part of the treatment of this uh, disorder. Finally, I'd like to show a couple of clinical vignettes. So 45-year-old woman presents with insidious onset of shortness of breath, chest pain and fatigue, chest x-ray films revealed bilateral pulmonary infiltrate and enlarged hiller lymph nodes. Biopsy of one of these lesions show non-necrotizing granulomas. Special stains for fungi and mycobacteria are negative. The patient works as a secretary and has no history of occupational exposure to airborne materials or organic dusts. Which of the following is most likely diagnosis? A uh, patient has shown the two classic uh, uh, findings. Chest x-ray shows that Hiller adenopathy and, uh, and the biopsy shows the uh, non-caseating or non necrotizing granulomas. So the answer, of course, sarcoidosis. And next one, final one. A 25 year old woman comes to the clinic with two week history of painful red lumps on her shins. Uh, she denies fevers, night sweats, cough, or sputum production. Her temperature is 37, blood pressure is 120 over 72, pulse is 68, and respirations are 16. Lungs are clear. Cardiac exam is normal. She has multiple bilateral large red nodular lesions on her anterior tibial regions, which are painful to palpation. There is no purulent discharge. The lab studies show leukocyte count is 8,200, platelets 300,000, hematocrit 42, BUN 16, and creatinine 0 0.9. Chest x-ray shows bilateral hiller adenopathy. Appropriate treatment for this should include this rash that they're describing is erythema nodosum. And you notice she doesn't have any symptoms. And that's uh, sometimes a common presentation. Um, no underlying symptoms, but um, that's a common presentation of sarcoidosis that it's an incidental finding on a chest x-ray of this classic uh, Hiller adenopathy. And the treatment, of course, for sarcoidosis involves corticosteroids.